Buongiorno from Rome, everybody. My name is Ariane. I am a luxury travel advisor based in Vancouver, Canada. And today I am here in beautiful Roma. I can't wait to show you what you can do the next time that you are visiting Rome if you have two or three days. So let's get right to it. I am here quite early in the morning. I am here at Pont d'Angelo, right in front of the Castle d'Angelo. And it is quite early in the morning. I highly suggest if you are looking at visiting Rome and getting the most out of your trip here to really wake up early and explore. I'll show you what this bridge looks like at about one o'clock in the afternoon. I'll put that photo kind of here, but as you can see, totally night and day. So let's get to it. Let's explore Rome. Pont St. Angelo leads up to the Castle St. Angelo, which was completed in 134 AD by Roman Emperor Hadrian. Rome is an extremely walkable city. I love to walk early in the morning to Vatican City and take in the views from here. I've been to the Vatican a couple times over my few visits to Rome that I've done. I really suggest visiting the Vatican Museum and also doing a private tour. I was able to visit the Vatican after hours, even having dinner at the Vatican after it closed. For more information on booking this type of tour, visit my website at wonderlessjourney.ca as I'd love to help you book your special experience here at the Vatican and in Rome. Piazza Navona was also used as another arena. Around one of the corners, you can actually view one of the ancient entryways into the old arena space. Lago de Torre Argentina is an archeological site close to where Julius Caesar was killed and more recently is now home to a colony of feral cats. If you're looking for a really unique view of the Vatican, check out the Knights of Malta keyhole. It's really difficult to actually use an iPhone to get the shot. However, if you do have a regular camera, sometimes it is possible. Also be prepared to wait in line as it is a popular spot to try to get that popular shot. I then walked over Ponto Emilio to the very popular Trastevere area of Rome. If you're looking for a great place to eat, I highly suggest checking out Tonorello. It is absolutely amazing food and really suggest trying the pasta carbonara here.
Another place I suggest checking out to eat is a place called Trapezino. They do these pizza bites that are absolutely delicious and come in a bunch of different local flavors. Also, try the Simply, which is very similar to arancini, except again, it is a Roman traditional food. If by this time you're looking for a cafe for a little bit of a caffeine hit, check out Giolitti. They have amazing espresso, light bites, and also gelato during the summer. One of my favorite open air markets to check out whenever I'm visiting Rome is Campo del Fiore. This market features florists, spices, homewares, and other goods. I also really suggest checking out the bakery that is located in this square, which is called Fiorno, and they do an amazing pizza bianco, which is mortadella, mozzarella, and figs. Forno Roscoli is another of my favorites for fresh pizza and also simply. Two Sizes Tiramisu claims to have the best tiramisu in town. As their name states, they do two sizes of tiramisu. They have a small and a large. I tried the caramel tiramisu and I have to be honest, it was quite good. So if you are in the area, definitely check them out. Just down the street from two sizes, you'll find the gelato shop called Frigidarium. Again, this place gets very busy in the summer with really long lines. So definitely be sure to pack your patience if you are wanting to come and check this place out. But I can say that the gelato is 100% worth the wait. If you're coming to Rome and looking for a unique shopping experience, definitely check out the Humana vintage shops dotted around Rome. They have designer goods that obviously are gently used for amazing prices. They have a few locations around Rome and obviously all throughout Italy. If you love tiramisu as much as I do, definitely check out Mr. 100 Tiramisu. Yes, they have 100 different flavors and varieties of tiramisu. They typically start off with their traditional tiramisu and dress it up according to your order. I just tried the classic as I'm a purist and it was really, really delicious. Highly suggest checking them out. Next up to burn some of those calories was a visit to the Pantheon. The Pantheon is a really fascinating building to visit here in Rome. It does have a hole in the center of the dome, which if it does rain, it does rain on the inside of the church. It's a really interesting place to visit, especially if you're into architecture as it is quite an engineering marvel.
Another must do during your visit to Rome is visiting the Trevi Fountain. This fountain is absolutely stunning and I highly suggest visiting either really early in the morning or later in the evening when it's not peak tourist periods. Just around the corner from the Trevi Fountain, you'll find Piccolo Arancio, which is definitely one of my favorite restaurants here in Rome. They do an amazing pasta here, which is their specialty, which obviously is a ravioli with essence of orange. Their full menu is really good. I love their fried artichoke and their deep fried zucchini blossoms. Everything I've ever had here is really delicious, so highly suggest checking this place out and making a reservation when you visit Rome. You'll also really want to spend a few hours on one of the days that you visit Rome to check out the Roman Forum and the Colosseum. It's actually a dual ticket, so you'll get a timed entry into the Colosseum to view that, and then you'll be able to wander the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill. I would also really suggest having a guide here, whether that's in a small group or even a private tour of this area, as there really is so much history here, and the boards that provide information don't really do it justice. If you're interested in assistance in planning your next visit to Rome, please reach out as I'd love to work with you as your travel advisor. As a luxury travel advisor, my clients typically receive added benefits when booking vacations, hotel stays, and cruises through me and my team. I'd love to work with you as your travel advisor. If you don't already have one, you can contact me using the link found in the description box down below or at my website at wonderlessjourney.ca. Nearby to Palatine Hill and also the Roman Forum, you'll find the remnants of Circus Maximus. At the south end, you'll find an open air interpretive center and the rest of Circus Maximus is usually open to the public as a park and event space.
Another place to check out some tiramisu or gelato is Pompey. I really enjoyed their tiramisu and it's easy to grab and go as it's served in a little box. Across the way you'll find Venci, which is popular for chocolate and again gelato. Spanish Steps is another one of my favorite places to go and enjoy here in Rome. Personally, I like to go quite early in the morning when there aren't these crowds. And another tip is most of the fountains in Rome, you can actually drink from certain spouts. So the drinking water in Rome is very clean. So definitely bring a reusable water bottle and fill up at the various fountains around the city. There's also some luxury shopping around the Spanish Steps and also one of my favorite cafes, which is the Antico Cafe Greco. This place has been in existence for over 250 years. Yes, a cafe that has been here over 250 years. And the coffee is really good. Highly suggest going and checking this place out. Another favorite is Pastifico. Here you can grab a bowl of pasta with a small glass of wine for four euro 50. Yes, four euro and 50 cents. I also recommend just to stand and eat inside as you can't actually eat on the Spanish steps as it is considered to be illegal to do so. I really hope you enjoyed this episode highlighting a few of the things you can do, see, and of course eat during your visit to Rome over the course of two or three days. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up as it does help support my channel and also be sure to hit that subscribe button down below as my next episode will actually be in Florence and also exploring some of Tuscany. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.